Hello and welcome to Meetings and Math. You are here for section 3.1, Parallel Lines and Transversals. Our essential question is explain the special kind of angles that can be found and what they look like and what is special about them. Today you will need a pen or a pencil. Highlighters are really useful when we're looking at parallel lines and transversals. A ruler might be useful, a calculator, and always bring your problem solving skills. So please make sure you're in chapter three of your Jaguar Jots and it says 3.1 at the top. And we're going to begin by giving some definitions, looking at relationships, looking at what do these different things look like. And the very first one we're going to start with is parallel. And most of you have maybe heard this word parallel before, and you've heard about railroad tracks or things that don't touch, things like that. But we're going to get a little more um, mathy about it. And so parallel lines are lines that do not intersect. I want you to unline do not intersect because that's how we're going to be talking about it and using that terminology intersect. And the way that we show it mathematically is we write P and then it's two vertical lines. Sometimes people put them a little bit at a slant so that they don't look like L's. So P is parallel to Q. And that's how we read this is P is parallel to Q. And here's examples of parallel lines. And the way that we show that two lines are parallel is we put these little arrows in the middle of the lines. And so that's how we indicate that they are parallel is with these little arrows right there. The next set of lines that we look like want to look at is beginning with these lines right here. And these lines are not parallel. They are just two lines L and M. And what we want to look at is a transversal. And we're going to break this word down to that very first word, that root word of trans. So to transverse something means to cross over the land or to cross over something. T-R-A-N-S means to cross over. So to transversal, this transversal lines means it's going to cross over two lines. So a transversal line is a line that connects two or more lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to make line T. So it is the transversal line of L and M. That means it needs to cross over both lines. So whenever we're using lines and making lines, we're going to use a straight edge. So a straight edge could be a, a ruler of some sort, or it could even just be a piece of paper that I folded up so that I have a nice crisp line on it. You could use the side of your book, but whatever it is, it needs to be a nice straight line. So I'm going to make a transversal line and it could be going any kind of direction I want. It could be straight like this. It could be like this. There's no rules right now about the transversal line. It just asked us to make a transversal line. And lines have arrows at the end of them. Let's go ahead and name this line T. And that is our transversal line. It connects up lines L and M. So those two together, a parallel line and a transversal line, once we put them together, we start having connections with the different angles that they make. And we get to look at those angles and some really cool things start happening with them. We start having congruent angles and we start having later on, you'll hear about supplementary angles, which are really cool. Um, you'll hear about those and they're nice. But the congruent angles is where we're going to focus today and finding those. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is corresponding angles. Now we've talked about corresponding in the past. If you remember, corresponding means in the same place. So they're in the same position. So let's make sure we read this right here. It says L is parallel to M. So this is saying line L is parallel to line M. So even though we don't have the little thingies marked, that the line is telling us or the statement is telling us that. And P is the transversal. So P is the line connecting them up. So some things that we know about corresponding angles is they're in the same place. So if you imagined that I took this line M, let's just imagine that my ruler is line M and I pushed it up right here, they would be in the same place. So let's take a piece of paper real fast. And I took this piece of paper and what I did was I just copied it so that this is line M and all the angles. And if I just slide it along, you can see that those are corresponding angles. So you can see Here's my E is in the same place as B. F and C are in the same place. A and H and D and G are in the same place. If I took that same angle and I just slide it along, they're in the same place. But I hope you notice something else. What else do you notice? 
I hope that you notice that it perfectly covers it up and those corresponding angles are also congruent. So that's really cool. That's gonna allow us to make some inferences and to make some conclusions based on that. So how do we find those without having this piece of paper to help us? Well, I look at this right here and I'm gonna look specifically at angle C right here. And when I trace it over, I feel like I'm writing the letter L. Okay, and when I look at that one and I bring it over, what corresponded to E but F? It was in the same place. And if I look at it, it looks like it's also there. And so if I take my hands, what this is what I want you to do is I want you also to take your hands. And what I want you to do is I want you to make the two parallel lines. So here's your two parallel lines. And I want you now to make the transversal by sticking your thumbs out. So what you're going to do is you're going to put one hand facing towards you and one hand facing away. Make a fist and make your parallel lines and I'll stick out your thumbs. Your thumbs, the transversal, your pointer finger is the parallel lines and you're gonna slide them together. Do you see how they're the same? Those are your corresponding angles. And it looks like you're stacking those L's one on top of the other. It's a stacked L's. So the corresponding angles are congruent. So what we're gonna look for are those stacked L's. That's gonna help our brain see it. And when you can make those hand motions and that's gonna help you. Now, if we're looking at it and we wanna now talk about mathematically, you're gonna notice that they're on the same side of the transversal. So if I was to come in here with a highlighter real fast, you'll notice they're on the same side of the transversal, right? They're on the top line of that transversal. And then they're on the same side of the line, so of the parallel line. So they're both to the right. So that's the other way that you can find it by talking about it more with geometry. All right, so now that we kind of understand how to look for them, let's go ahead and name those corresponding angles. So what corresponds to A? In other words, what's in that stacked L? What's in that same place? Well, A went to H, B went to E, C we already know because we've been talking about it, and D went to G. We can always have corresponding angles, right? If we look back up here, the corresponding angle to this right here is this right here. Those are in the same place. Now they're not congruent because those lines aren't parallel, but they are in the same place. But what's special is when those lines are parallel. So once we have those parallel lines, so when the lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. Now this is an if then. It's saying when the lines are parallel. So the lines have to be parallel first and then we get to say that the lines are congruent. So now we need to kind of harken back to some things that we've talked about before in the past and things and I just wanna make sure you remember them. When we are talking about angle pairs, what kind of angles equal 90 degrees? In other words, when I have a picture like this and I have A and B and I tell you that A plus B is equal to 90 degrees, what is the name of that relationship? The name of that relationship is complementary angles. K -k 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 complementary k -k -k corner, right? Complementary corner. Likewise, if we have the angles and you have a straight line and A plus B is equal to 180 degrees, those have a name as well. And those are supplementary. S -s 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 supplementary are just straight angles, which are 180 degrees. We do need to remember this because we're going to be working with them and we just need to remember them. So that was hopefully a little bit of a reminder. All right, so let's look at example number one. Find the measure of angle number two. And so the way that we say measure of angle two and we abbreviate it is like this. So we're gonna go find that and the diagram's not to scale and we start off with saying A is parallel to B. So remember that that is telling us A is parallel to B and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dive right in. So the first thing that I notice is I'm looking for two and I don't have a lot of information. I do know that one and two are next to each other. And because I know that they're next to each other and they're on a straight line, I know that that's 180, which is really good information for me to know, but I don't know what one is, so I really can't go from there. So 
it'd be nice if I knew what one is. So we're gonna keep that piece of information in our, and we're gonna write it down on a piece of paper. So this is our kind of our scratch paper. We're keeping track of um, things that we know, but we don't really know where it's headed yet. So I know that angle one and angle two are supplementary, which means when I add them together, I can finish this problem, but I don't know that yet. And that's okay that I don't know that yet, but I'm gonna write it down because what, we're, what we wanna do is we want our brains to be freed up for thinking. So I look at this. If I knew measure of angle one, I could do this. So I'm gonna look back at my thing and I'm gonna say, do I know the measure of angle one? And I start looking at it and I start noticing these two right here, they look like they're in the same place. They look like they give me my stacked L's. And so I'm gonna kind of look at this. I'm gonna say, do they give me my stacked L's? They're both on the top side of the transversal. So that's good. And they're both on the left side of the line. That's good as well. That means that they are in fact corresponding angles, which means I have a place to start. So that's exactly what this is. This is going to give me a place to record my information and give a reason. I'm gonna say that the measure of angle one is equal to 99 degrees. And why did I know that? Because of corresponding angles. So here I am giving you what I know and then the reason I know it. Then the next thing that I knew, I'm gonna say that I knew this right here, that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two was 180. Why did I know that? Because they're a linear pair or supplementary angles. You could use either one for an answer. And that was coming from a piece of paper where I just jotted down that information that I could remember. Then I do know some information. I know what angle one is. I know angle one is 99 degrees. How did I do that? I did that with substitution. So when you replace something that you know like that, it's substitution. And then I subtract 99 from both sides. I'm gonna do that really small for you. And I get my answer that the measure of angle two is equal to 81 degrees. So we were able to figure this out. We did need two pieces of information. We did need to know corresponding angles. We did need to know supplementary angles, actually three pieces. And we did need to know how to solve equations. So we do need to have our strong algebra skills as well as our geometry skills. So now let's look at this idea of interior and exterior angles. What do we mean by that? Well, what we mean is in relationship to the two lines that are being connected by that transversal, we do consider it interior or exterior. So if you're doing it in relationship to those things, those two lines. So if you look at this right here and you go between the two lines that are being connected by the transversal, the part in yellow would be considered your interior. And then the part above and the part below would be considered your exterior. So your interior is between and your exterior is outside. Just like in a house. And a house, if you're inside the walls, it's the interior. If you're outside the walls, it's exterior. So let's go ahead and name the interior angles. The interior angles would be angles, what? Three, four, five, and six. And the exterior angles would be one, two, seven, and eight. So why do we care about that? Well, because we have something called alternate interior angles that help us find more congruent angles. So alternate interior angles actually tells us exactly where we wanna look. Alternate is referring to alternating the transversal and interior means it's going to be in those yellow numbers. So now let's alternate sides of the transversal and then interior means stay inside the parallel lines. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. Again, we have L parallel to M. And then since we're going to stay inside the lines, we already know that we're not going to use one, four, six, or seven. We are only going to use either two, five, three, and eight because we will only want the parts on the inside. Now the next part says alternate. So that means you're going to switch from one side to the other. So let's go ahead and start on the first one, which is two. So if I start here at two, I'm gonna go here at two, and then I'm gonna follow my along here, and then I'm going to alternate sides. So to alternate sides, I'm gonna go along to eight. Let me do that one more time. I'm going to start at two, I'm gonna go along, and then I have to alternate sides, 
and come down to eight. So I'm alternating. And so what is my alternate interior angle to two? The alternate interior angle to two is angle eight. So let's go ahead and talk about what we can look at. When we said corresponding angles, we said, look for that stacked L, right? The stacked L. What kind of pattern does that look like to you? Maybe if I turn it, it might look like something else. What does that look like? If you had to describe it, kind of reminds me of a Z. So we tend to talk about this one as a Z pattern. Alternate interior angles make a Z pattern. So now let's go look at three. If here I am at three, I'm gonna go ahead and trace it. So if I trace out three, I'm coming along here. I'm coming down here because that's angle three, but come down and now I have to alternate sides. So I go to five, but we were told that L is parallel to M. And just like with corresponding angles, alternate interior angles have a special thing when they are parallel. So when the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are special as well. So let's go ahead and explore that a little bit. If I have angle two right here, and I know the alternate in interior angle is eight, let's go ahead and pull that over and look at it. What do we notice? We notice that they are also congruent. So when the lines are parallel, and again, this is only when they're parallel, the alternate interior angles are also congruent, but this is only when they're parallel. So now let's go ahead and make a statement. So since they're parallel, we can say something. We can say that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle eight. We can say that angle two is congruent to angle eight. And that's only because the lines are parallel. We can do the exact same thing for um, angle three and angle five. We can say that angle three is congruent to angle five which means that the measures are the same as well. It doesn't matter which one you do first or second, it's a, they are both true at the same time. The last one we wanna look at are vertical angles. Now vertical angles are not made anything with parallel lines, they are standalone on their own, and, but they do have something special about them. Vertical angles are when you take two lines and you crisscross them. Okay, it doesn't matter how you crisscross them, you can crisscross them so that they're very, very like this, or you can crisscross them so they're very, very like this, or anything in between. It's just two lines where you've crisscrossed them. Let's go ahead and just take our paper and look at them. So let's take angle three. Now remember, vertical angles are across from each other. So let's take this and take it across from each other. And look at that, it lines up perfectly with angle one, and so they are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent. Take your two arms, okay? Each arm going to be a line. We have a little dance that goes with it. It's real simple. Each one goes out and they cross and then we're going to peek through the vertical angles and then at the same time we're just going to say vertical angles are congruent. So it goes like this. Vertical angles are congruent and vertical angles are congruent. That's it. It helps us remember it. You can do it with your fingers. Vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. It's the little thing that just helps our brain remember vertical angles are congruent and where those vertical angles are. So let's look at this. Angle one, what is congruent to angle one? Angle three. Angle two, so remember the little swoops mean that they are congruent. So how many swoops do I need to put on four? I need to put two since it was two on angle two and angle four. So that was it. What I'd like you to do tonight is I'd like you to write down the different kinds of angles that there are and just what is special about them. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.